All right, let's get into it with the guys back in studio with the two-time Super Bowl champ, Bryant McFadden, Ryan Wilson also in the mix. Uh, guys, like a young LeBron James straight from high school to the league just <laughs> Saturday, uh, getting the job done here on a Sunday. Plenty to get to coming out of this one. So let's go chronologically because Matt Ryan was not expected to start this game, nor was he expected to start for the remainder of the season. Then you have a head coaching change. We thought that that decision had come down from high. Jim Irsay saying, let's go with Ellinger. But here we see Jeff Saturday making that change prior to this game, BMAC. Do you read into that decision? Like, did that set the tone for the day for you? Uh, no question. I felt like making that decision to go with, with the more experienced coach was beneficial for this, their team because I felt like when they decided to bench Matt Ryan, the entire team wasn't in agreement with that in regards with the players. Mm -hmm. So now coming in and saying, you know what? We brought Matt Ryan into this organization to lead us. And granted, it's been – down a lot of downs we still believe he can get the job done now you're starting he's back in the starting lineup if i look at the numbers correctly matt ryan played pretty good football only seven incompletions over 200 yards a touchdown no interceptions joe you talked about that huge scramble i mean he looked like lamar jackson a little bit if you kind of squeak your eyes just a little bit he kind of like oh is that lamar no that's matty ice but well done by matt ryan a total Com complete team effort. Mm -hmm. And think about this, guys. I know we've all criticized the decision to go with Jeff Saturday. We all have our reasons. I felt like there were other guys on that staff that were more deserving mm -hmm. based on their experience. But for Jeff Saturday to never be a head coach, he outcoached a guy who's been in the league for quite some time in Josh McDaniels. Think about that. BMAC, come on, come on now. He beat the Raiders. And let's be real. It's a great win for the Colts. My first question is, if I'm Frank Reich sitting at home with my feet up on the coffee table drinking a beer and I see that Matt Ryan started, I'm thinking, wait a second. Didn't Ursay tell me I had to bench Matt Ryan in order to get things going in the right direction? And here we are two weeks later, I'm out of a job, and a guy who was coaching high school football and working uh, in broadcast is, is now making that decision. There are a ton of questions. It's a big win, and it's a fun win. Uh, shout out to Parker Frazier, Parks Frazier, excuse me, uh, the 30 0 offensive coordinator, who by all accounts did exactly what that team needed to do. Nothing fancy, nothing tricky. And BMAC, you've talked about this in the past how offensive coordinators can't get out of their own way because they think they're so smart. Parks Frazier gave the ball to Jonathan uh, Taylor. And he had a huge day, 147 yards on the ground, and he made things simple for the offense in the passing game. Now, I'm sure he didn't dial that 39-yard run from Matt Ryan, but everything else felt like it was between the lines. He stayed on the road, didn't get out of his lane to keep this analogy going uh, along the highway here, and they won this football game. But I I'm not willing to go so far as to say Jeff Saturday proved anything to me other than he beat a listless, discombobulated, Raiders team that you have huge questions about Josh McDaniel's future. At least you should if you're Mark Davis. I'm sure he'll keep his job for quite a while. But th there are a lot of issues in Vegas, and, and it starts at the top. Yeah, I want to get to Vegas here in a moment. But by the measures of a head coach, four penalties for 25 yards by the Colts, just one giveaway. Uh, they win the middle eight here, even scoring throughout those middle eight, sort of those measurements that we do uh, stack these coaches up by. So I, I guess I'll ping pong it right back to here, Ryan. What did you make of Jeff Saturday? Take away the opponent. Just take the week for what it was. The preparation, this moment to get his team to buy in and say, hey, I'm Jeff. Let's go win a football game. What did that tell you this week? <laughs> I love that he had to introduce his stuff himself. Uh, hi, I'm Jeff. I'm your new coach. Uh, so let's see if we can make this work. No better opponent to face than the Raiders. But as BMAC noted, there are other people certainly more qualified on that staff that deserve shots. All of them have coaching experience except for Jeff Saturday. But whatever, here's the deal. And I'll give Saturday credit for this. Yes, he is not qualified for this job. Yes, he's a leader. And he made that clear in that introductory press conference where Jim Ursay and, and uh, Chris Ballard, the GM, both seemed like they didn't want to be there for different reasons. The only voice of reason was Jeff Saturday, and, and he sold himself uh, to me, and he acquitted himself quite well to people that were listening. And I think if he can get his players, his staff to buy in, then you got something. And, and look, I say this all the time. Sometimes these offensive coordinators, defense coordinators who are hot candidates to get head coaching jobs are not qualified to be head coaches. 
maybe Jeff Saturday is an example of a guy who is qualified to be a head coach. He doesn't have to dial up the plays, play in and play out. He can focus on the bigger picture. And for one game, he did a good job of that. He seemed upbeat on the sidelines. He was congratulating his coaches for, for doing things well. And, and those are the things you want to see. You know, Pete Prisco says all the time, football's not complicated. And it felt like Jeff Saturday and to a, an extent his 30-year-old offensive coordinator, Parks Frazier, Made it uncomplicated for the Colts, and they went into Vegas and won that football game. Yeah, maybe this is a matter of uh, Saturday playing the role of team CEO and really letting his coordinators do what they need no to question. do. Uh, we hear Ryan here mention Parks Frazier, the 30-year-old play caller, uh, really dialed it up to what his team needed. Flip side of that coin, the Raiders play calling, very unimaginative. Mm. Uh, the situation wasn't always met with the call, BMAC. When we take a look at a guy in Josh McDaniels that's supposed to be able to dial up a game plan, where is he currently falling short as a play caller and not just as a head coach? Just season and capitalizing in the moment. That fourth and sixth play mm -hmm. opportunity it was, you don't need a touchdown. You're outside the 10-yard line, if I'm not mistaken. You still had a timeout in your hand under 50 seconds. Time wasn't an issue. Six yards was the biggest issue. You became aggressive. You took a shot in the end zone. And then when you talk about targeting Devontae Adams, that is the guy you want to try to get the football to. But when you look at some of the best play callers in the game, let's use Sean McVay as an example. If that was a situation with Sean McVay standing on the sideline, nine times out of ten he's going to Cooper Cup. But where Cooper Cup will line up? Usually at the number two, the slot wide receiver, or the number three. Put him in a situation where he's working with a guy that can't really cover him, a matchup that's in his favor. When you put Devontae out at the perimeter. Guess who's following him? Mm -hmm. Their best cover man and Stephon Gearmore. Oh, by the way, who has been balling this year? And you just threw a fly ball to Devontae. Find a way to scheme up your best pass catcher to get the six yards, then regroup and find a way to attack the end zone. That was a mishandled opportunity. Mishandled opportunity by Josh McDaniels. But get this, has been a common theme yeah. for him since becoming the head coach there in Las Vegas. And because of that, they're a bad team. Yeah. They're a bad team. And don't forget, this same team, basically the same personnel with a few additions, a few losses, made the playoffs last year. And that came under Rich Bisaccia in that interim role. The players, a lot of them calling for Bisaccia to take the head coaching role. Revisionist history uh, might tell that story, but the story that's to be told right now in Las Vegas is one of failure, uh, Ryan Wilson. When you take a look at it, and you alluded to it earlier, how Josh McDaniel does have some leash. He does have some rope to work with. But how do you walk into the facility on Monday morning, Tuesday morning, whenever that may be, look everybody that you're working with in the eye and say, I just lost to, with all due respect to Jeff Saturday, a high school head coach. Lost to a high school head coach who two weeks ago tweeted, the Raiders are terrible. And if you can't <laughs> use that as motivational material uh, to your team going into this game at home and you still lose – what are we doing? What are we doing? BMAC is exactly right. That last play call is a microcosm of the entire season, which has been, for most part, a huge failure on that offense. Uh, the defense, by the way, they got their first sack in the third quarter of this game, the first sack in 13 quarters prior to that. That ain't going to work. It was Max Crosby, of course, because he's their best player on the defensive side of the ball. But I want to go to the play just before the fourth down mm -hmm. play that BMAC just talked about. That was a head scratcher. Uh, Foster Moreau, the tight end, dropped the ball that hit him right in the hands in the end zone. That's probably game over or close to game over because the Raiders would have gone up on that touchdown. So it's a combination of not great play calling, which was that fourth down play, and people not making plays when given the opportunity, which was that third down play. And taken as a whole, that's how you get to two wins uh, through ten weeks of football and a ton of questions that remain unanswered. I feel like if there was a, an owner not named Mark Davis, they would have some serious questions uh, uh, about Josh McDaniels going forward. But I, I don't think you can fire Josh McDaniels uh, almost a year to the day after moving on from John Gruden and then kicking Rich Versace out the door, who actually did all the heavy lifting to get this team to the playoffs. Yeah, we'll see how it all plays out. In the end, it's the Colts going to Vegas, rolling the dice, coming away with a win. But Enjoy those wins when you can get them. Lying in wait for Jeff Saturday's second head coaching appearance, the Philadelphia Eagles. Guys, great stuff as always. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.